As we mentioned earlier, binary files cannot be merged in the same way that text files can, which poses extra challenges for source control. The majority of the assets used by the Unreal Engine editor are binary format, and this includes everything from levels and blueprints to materials, level sequences, and more. While we touched on one solution for merging blueprints using the Merge tool in Unreal Engine, even this method is best avoided, and team members should always rely on a check-out, check-in workflow to lock the files they are working on and prevent any concurrent edits from occurring. While the checkout check-in method does a good job of solving potential conflicts in Perforce Helix Core, it can also present a major bottleneck. How do large teams collaborate on the same project if only one person can edit a file at a time? The answer, put simply, is to structure the project in such a way that it is broken down into very small pieces that can each be checked out individually. Let's look at levels, for example, to see this in practice. Levels are where all the action takes place in Unreal, so to speak, and can contain hundreds or thousands of different objects, actors, lights, blueprints, and more. Everything you see visually in virtual production on an LED wall or through a render takes place inside a level. These objects and animations are all carefully placed, composed, and tested. If only one person can work in a level at a time, any medium to large project would grind to a halt. We solve this issue in Unreal through the use of sublevels. Each level can be composed of a single persistent level with any number of sublevels contained within it. Each one of these sublevels is its own binary file, and they can all be checked out or worked on independently of one another. It's best to split these levels up by the object types contained within them. One level may contain the geometry of the terrain, another may contain the lighting, and another may contain character animations. The larger the scene within the level and the more people working on the project, the more granularly these levels should be broken down. Here are some examples of different sublevel structures for LED wall virtual production projects of various sizes and what they could look like. Small, two to three people, persistent level, stage, environment, lighting. This small LED virtual production project uses only three sublevels. The stage level contains a view of the stage 3D mesh and associated blueprints that allow an operator to visualize the stage within the scene and access various tools on set. Another sublevel contains the entire environment, excluding the lighting which is contained in the final level. In this case, the main team on this project would likely consist of just two people, one environment artist and one lighting artist, each working in separate sublevels. Medium, three to five people, persistent level, stage, environment foreground, environment background, lighting. This project contains the same set of sublevels as the previous example, but with the addition of one more environment level, splitting it up into a foreground and background. Now an additional level artist can be added to the project, and environment art can be separated into foreground and background tasks. Large, five plus people, persistent level, stage, environment foreground, environment middle ground, environment background, props, effects, lighting. This example once again contains the same sublevels as the previous example with more additions. We've added additional environment sublevels for middle ground and props, each able to be used by different artists. We've also gained an effects level where a technical artist can add particle effects atmospheric effects, or other additional items. As the team grows, this list could grow even larger. How you break down your levels depends on the project and the team that will be working on it. For example, maybe you break down your environment by set piece segments, for example, castle, village, and forest. If your level contains animated animals, these all might be in their own level. 
it's important to plan out the contents of your virtual scene before production begins, as well as the team who will be working on it, and go into production with a clear plan for how the sublevel structure should be broken down. Just because you may have a smaller team working on a project does not mean you need to have fewer sublevels, if it logically makes sense to have more because of what the scene contains. Even as a one-person team, breaking your scene into sublevels can help with organization and allow you to more quickly iterate and create alternate options by toggling their sublevels on and off. As a general rule, if there is ever a member of the team who is consistently unable to do their own work due to locked levels, then you need a more granular sublevel breakdown. Even better, this should be anticipated before production begins so the problem never even arises. Let's take a look at this idea in action. Here's an example of a set of sublevels for an LED wall virtual production project in Unreal 4. The structure will be identical in Unreal 5. We can easily see by toggling the visibility on these levels how their contents are broken down between environments, lighting, and stage sublevels. If I want to work in lighting, for example, I can check out the level specifically and work with the lighting while still seeing all the other levels. In fact, we can see the environment sublevel is currently checked out by another team member while I work. When my teammate completes their work, I can quickly update the level asset within Unreal Engine and instantly see the result of their changes as well as the changeless description if I so choose. At any point, I can add additional levels to the hierarchy by creating a new level and dragging it into the levels pane. Keep in mind that for most LED wall virtual production projects with a static background, you will want to make all these levels visible by default rather than streaming them in. You can do this by right-clicking on them after creation and selecting the Always Loaded option. Let's think back to the issue we faced earlier when merging down our mainline stream into our engineering development stream. This issue could be avoided if all the new changes we made were done in their own separate sublevel. This way, we could simply attach our new sublevel to the list of levels, preventing any sort of level conflict entirely when we replace our other level with the version that we merged down. This same concept can be applied to other elements of your Unreal Engine project as well. Blueprints should always be kept as small as possible and separated depending on their function, rather than allowing one master blueprint to grow too large. For animated virtual production, level sequences, which contain key-framed animation and cameras, should always be broken down into sub-scenes. This allows you to split up tracks for animation, lighting, FX, and so on, so that multiple team members can all work together on different aspects of the same shot or scene at the same time. Always be thinking about this concept as you are structuring your Unreal Engine projects. It's easy to ignore this concept for the sake of speed at the beginning of a production when a project is small and then have it snowball into a massive issue later on that requires multiple days of project refactoring and costs valuable time, putting deadlines in jeopardy. Do the work the right way early on, so your team and project does not amass technical debt that must be paid down the line. 